Hello, my name is George and my amateur radio call sign is KS1U. Thanks for visiting my video of what I think is arguably one of the most unique Heathkit SB102s you'll ever see. Now I'm aware that not all of the purists out there will find my rebuild appealing. However, I saved this particular transceiver from the parts bin, or perhaps worse yet, the trash, and therefore I think any rebuild that saves a radio is a worthwhile project. Since I actually use the radios I rebuild, I incorporated some modern features I felt would make this SB-102 fun and convenient to use. Since this was a complete teardown to the point of disassembling switches, removal of all components, and polishing the chassis, I decided to change the color scheme of the radio uh, that you see here to a metallic blue and gray. If there is sufficient interest in this project, I may add another video on some subcomponents like restringing the dial cord or rebuilding the power supply. Uh, in addition to the transceiver, I also rebuilt the static D104 mic and, as I just mentioned, the HP23 power supply, which included rewinding the transformer. If I had it to do over again, and you run into this whenever you do a one-only rebuild, I would have done a few things differently. But for now, at least, the radio performs to my liking, which is even better than the original did. The most obvious difference from a typical SB-102 and this one, aside from the color and blue LED glow that you see around the tuning dial here, is the digital readout. I'll try to get a uh, little bit of close-up here. I also have an external BFO, which is still under construction, and that one will be uh, used to provide for split frequency operation. I retain the original VFO as Heathkit designed except for the addition of a VVC diode to provide an RIT function of about plus or minus 10 kilohertz. The readout assembly is a DFD2 unit available as a kit from almost all digital electronics. This readout takes the inputs from the heterodyne oscillator, the VFO, and the BFO to generate an accurate operating frequency which automatically adjusts for upper sideband, lower sideband, and CW. You'll also notice some other changes on the front panel that are different from the original. And that includes this switch over here, which you can just barely see. The 15 and 14 uh, represent megahertz. Uh, this is to switch between the 14 megahertz amateur band and 15 megahertz WWV coverage. The LED is to remind me not to transmit on 15 megahertz whenever I have it on. I hear WWB doesn't like competition and I'd like to keep my license. Over here is the RIT function and that provides about plus or minus 10 kilohertz of coverage and over here is the single sideband CW filter switch. The original used mechanical uh, switches and they were very problematic. I switched to gold-plated relays which uh, had performed flawlessly. Inside the radio you'll notice that I used IERC tube shields which are one of the very few types of tube shields to actually reduce internal temperature and therefore extend tube life. This circuit up here is for the RIT and there's another one over here that I don't think I can get to from this angle over behind the meter but it provides for uh, automatic meter switching from transmit to receive let me see if I can get a signal here. To... It's just after sunset and you know, we're not getting too much action on the S meter, but you can see that it does move with the uh, signal. And the original Heath kit was designed so that you had to switch manually from transmit power out to receive. Uh, S units 
and this led to a lot of premature failures of that switch so it's now done automatically with gold-plated relays. Aside from the color of the RF cage, which is now red, and again I haven't pulled the top off, but there are a couple of 6293 tubes in there. Those are pulse rated 6146's and they really do last almost forever. Very rugged construction and you can't use them in every instance where 6146 is called for but uh, applications where they do work they provide great service. I added a, a fan which helps circulate the air a little bit and over here you can see there are a couple of o-rings that I've left installed uh, because I need a few parts to actually get uh, strings and springs on this but I have managed to replace the o-ring on this capacitor with a string and spring assembly which reduces the uh, torque on the capacitor and hopefully will extend its lifespan because it's difficult to get exact replacement parts for many of these Heath kits now. Many of the original values and tolerances of components have also been altered to improve performance. A lot of those substitutions were done by experiment and will vary between radios but I can say in all honesty that this radio performs better on transmit and receive than it did originally. Some of the changes that I made were upgrading all half watt resistors to one watt. They're now 2% metal film as opposed to 10% carbon. I've used uh, high temperature uh, electrolytics whenever possible and the capacitors have all been upgraded uh, wherever and whenever possible. I've also rebuilt the power supplies I mentioned and that was quite a task. You can see the HP 23 power supply down here. It's not very glamorous and again if there's sufficient interest I can open it up and go through the changes. I bought the original one at the MIT flea market and the guy who I bought it from told me it worked properly but Long story short, it didn't, so as always, caveat emptor. Anyhow, rather than pay big bucks for a replacement transformer, I rewound the original. I left out the original filament winding and used a separate filament transformer instead. I had the space available to do so because the original choke was removed. The stock transformer was run at near saturation and this change made for less voltage drop in a cooler running transformer. The deletion of the choke was enabled by using the regulated design and PC board of Mike Bryce from Sunlight Energy Systems. The bottom of the power supply is less interesting than the top and you can only see the jumble of you know, Teflon coated wires anyhow. I did add a, an additional 12 volt regulator circuit. As always when dealing with high voltage you really have to make sure you know what you're doing. It's tempting to pick up these uh, old Heath kits at flea markets, but you have to remember that these voltages can kill you if you're not careful. Well, that just about covers part one of this project. I will be posting part two, which will expose the underside and internal changes that were made to this transceiver. If you have any additional questions, just look me up in QRZ and send me an email. Thanks very much for looking. This is KS1U, clear and listening.